Welcome to Holistic Wisdom Live. Today I have a special guest, Dr. Dom Nischwitz from Germany, correct? You're in Germany? Yes, that's yes. Right. Okay, today's topic is optimal health begins in your mouth. We're going to talk about all kinds of things related to our oral health, oral hygiene, and all kinds of things from root canals to fillings to whatever comes up. We'll talk about tongue scraping, all of it. And yeah. I wanted to introduce Dr. Dom to all of you. Uh, he's a world-leading biological dentist and one of the first ceramic implant specialists. He is the vice president of the International Society for Metal Free Implantology, whose mission is to help as many people as possible to experience optimum oral health without the use of yesteryear metal-based treatments. Dr. Dom is international speaker and author of It's All in Your Mouth with the goal of establishing biological dentistry as the new standard for health optimization protocols for all health practitioners and dentists alike using the term health starts in your mouth. Dr. Nishwitz has exclusively used ceramic implants since 2013, placing more than 5,000 to date and is considered a pioneer in the field of biological and holistic dentistry. His other passion includes functional medicine, holistic nutrition and competitive sports. Dr. Dom trains traditional dentists in proper biological dentistry practices and believes that optimal health starts in the mouth. I love it. I'm so excited. Thank you so much for accepting to do this interview. You are my first dentist, especially biological dentist, something that I've been passionate about in my own practice and talking to all of my patients and clients around the world, really the importance of having a healthy mouth. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, so first I wanted to dive into what made you go, because I'm sure you studied traditional um, general dentistry. What made you go into the biological and holistic dentistry? Yes, I obviously I had to study conventional dentistry. But during university, it was all, there, there was always something missing. I didn't know while I was studying it because it wasn't my true purpose or passion. I just went into it. And I realized later on that the missing bit for me is helping patients really getting healthy. What you mainly trained at is obviously the craftsmanship, which is important. It is a high, highly manual skill. And I was always good at this one. So I, I was just questioning why is this all happening and why do we need dental repair and something just was missing. And because I wanted to become an oral surgeon straight after, um, I applied for a very good, um, let's say, residency. And my my first boss, he was a great surgeon, but he did he still did these old school mercury amalgam silver fillings, and I couldn't do them. I just told him I think they look ugly from my aesthetic point of view. I'm a very aesthetic pleasing person, so I couldn't do it. I just said no, I won't do it, and I will bring in composites and ceramics and everything. So imagine this one as someone straight from university talking to like to your boss like this. And he was like, he probably was like, oh, this dude is really bold, but let's do him, do, let's let, let him do what he wants. And obviously, because I said that, I had to look into it. Because in university, I learned mercury fillings are perfectly fine. They are kind of for free because insurance pays for it and they last forever. You shouldn't place them for pregnant women and kids, but that's it. So I looked into it. And Basically, this opened the whole field of functional medicine for me. And you have to know that during university or even before, I was just looking for me personally how to get my health back because my health declined very, very at a very young age. So in retrospect, my health issues in the early 20s probably led me to that path that I'm on right now. And today I'm the doctor that I would have needed back then because I crashed with depression at like 21 years old. I know why, where that came from, but there was nobody helping me back then. Yeah, it was early 2000s. So there was no Dr. Google, no YouTube, no functional medicine available for everyone. And if you had something with your mental health, in, at least in Germany, and I think it's the same everywhere, you were kind of doomed. Like, ah, now, now he's flipped. And I didn't believe it. I was just like, I want to be normal again. And then I was looking 
in nutrition, in fitness, in bodybuilding, whatever I could find during my, during my whole study. But parallel to university, I didn't combine it. It was just for me getting my health back, looking for more health. And then with the residency and the mercury fillings, everything opened up and the whole functional medicine perfectly fitted into the five years of my own experience with nutrition, supplements, all these things. And I could finally, I finally knew, okay, this makes sense that I am a doctor in some way. No, a dentist is kind of like a doctor too, even though you're just a dentist. So I just started to think about how can we all melt this in a concept straight away. So I was looking into building a center for biological dentistry or an integrative medical thing straight away after university. And it took me about five years to figure that out. And nowadays it's biological dentistry 2.0, the overlap of high-tech dentistry with functional medicine and health optimization slash biohacking with the goal of reaching optimal health for all the patients that fly in from all over the world. That's amazing. You know, it's so interesting because I also became very sick in my 20s mm. and I had severe asthma. So that also led me to a path of really analyzing and looking into functional medicine, looking into my diet and changing everything about my own habits to take me into the path of where I am today. So this is fascinating that it, 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 usually I would say takes a person that has had to deal with something, couldn't find the answers, and then you bring something to the world that is what you were searching for, which is the practitioner that you are today. So let's, yes. yeah, right? Yeah. Let's and dive we help in. many people together nowadays because still at this point of time, most people are chronically unhealthy. Yes. Chronic disease is the epidemic. It's not the pandemic, it's the chronic disease. And we have to change the way our medicine and dentistry and everything is done to help our patients because we don't have to be chronically sick. There are solutions. We just have to talk about it. That's why. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about the oral hygiene. Like there's so many misconceptions. You know, recently I actually was talking to one of my kids. I have four and they're older. And my oldest son just graduated university. He's applying to medical school. I gave him a tongue scraper. I'm like, Andrew, you got to use your tongue scraper. He's like, mom, why would I do that? I'm like, this is a great way to get rid of the bad bacteria in your mouth. One of the ways, right? So I want to talk about oral hygiene. What do you recommend to your patients overall on day-to-day -day basis? And what are some absolute no's? Like, for example, I know that I've had patients who were fruitarians who were drinking lots of you know, fruit juices and eating fruits and their amalgam is completely damaged. So I want to talk about different things that are an absolute must and also some things to avoid. Yes. Okay. Oral hygiene, that's a special topic because this is where you get the most heat from your conventional dentist if, as a biological dentist because we see things differently. Number one, we don't use fluoride yeah, in the toothpaste. And we don't use chemical mouth mouthwashes. That's also not a good thing. And it, we, we do it more naturally, let's say this way. Yeah? You have to see your teeth, like from nature, are hard as stone, kind of like granite. And your gums are naturally not bleeding. However, in this world, in the Western world at least, the patient average that we see in why dentistry has a few guidelines are having tooth decay. 90% of all you guys out there have tooth decay. That's number one chronic disease. And you have bleeding gums. Therefore, the Band-Aid or the bandage that we use in dentistry is fluoride containing toothpaste or lots of chemicals to disinfect your oral system on a daily basis because we believe in the germ theory as conventional dentists and chemical mouthwashes and flossing. But our goal as biological dentists is to show you or teach you that Number one should be your lifestyle and nutrition, which will feed the oral microbiome and build your teeth from the out and inside so that you don't need these unnatural bandages, so that you can do the natural toothpaste or even just brush your teeth without toothpaste and use what you just said. We always use a tongue scraper, particularly a copper tongue scraper would be ideal. For and instead of chemical mouthwashes, we do coconut oil pulling. So... Summarizing the oral hygiene, I would personally do is using a, let's say, toxin-free toothpaste, all natural, no fluoride, obviously. Maybe you go with hydroxyl apatite instead and use a tongue scraper. We can go into this in a second and try to implement coconut oil pulling once a day. 
this is the what I call the bulletproof oral healthcare strategy, where you where you support your oral microbiome and soothe your gums and your teeth, and then obviously your nutrition and lifestyle will also be optimized so that your teeth stay hard as stone and don't get very soft, uh, and because you got soft. Mm -hmm. So, which one do you want to go into first? Uh, let's go into tongue scraping. And then I did want to ask you your thought on ozonated gum gel. This is something that I've been using also on daily basis. I find it an amazing tool. Uh, just kind of twice a day, I'll put it in my mouth all over my gums. Yeah, ozonated, ozonated everything is amazing. So I'm a huge fan of ozone. That's the miracle molecule. We use it a lot in the clinic, but ozonated gum gel, very good one. Um, tongue scraper, you already mentioned it. It's, it's also, it, it's an Ayurvedic strategy. Basically, you just use a scraper, copper ideally because it's antibacterial, and you just, you just clean the ground, like the, the back of your tongue. Because overnight, you, yeah, there will be some debris, let's say a couple of bacteria, oral microorganisms, but also toxins and food stuff that gets stuck. So it's one of the best strategy, strategies also against bad breath. And you just do that for five seconds or maybe 10. That's it. You just, you just scrape it to the front from the back and, and then clean it. It's, it. it's a five to 10 second thing that helps you a lot. So it was a good strategy to tell it to your son for university because it's, yeah, it's fairly time consuming. You just have to make a habit out of it. Yes. And what about oil pulling? Like how many times a day would you recommend oil pulling? <laughs> If you do it once a day, it would be amazing. Just everything, do everything once a day consistently, and it's perfect. Oil pulling, I, we use coconut oil to pull because coconut oil contains lauric acid, which is antibacterial and antiviral. And, and um, also because of the fat content helps with detoxification. What you just do is you take a, let's say a teaspoon of extra virgin coconut oil, you put it into your mouth and you switch it around for at least five minutes or maybe 15, up to 50 minutes if you want to. And then most importantly, you don't swallow it. You spit it out, ideally in the bin, not in the sink because it will clock it up over time. And that's it, super simple. The only th thing is because it's a bit time consuming, people forget to do it and then they're like, oh, yo, I have to do it once a week, once a day, maybe every other day. But I think if you do stuff once a day, it becomes more of a habit. That's the, that's the goal about everything. It's all about consistency. If you can do that every single day, it will improve your immune system. It, it will make you, it is kind of like helping the good bacteria, but also taking out the bad ones. So it's more balancing to the whole microbiome. It doesn't destroy good bacteria. And also it's a detox thing. So that's a good one. I personally do that when I prepare my, my breakfast because mm -hmm. I'm anyways in the kitchen. I have time to do something during it. It's kind of like my niece time. So I need no extra time to stand somewhere and do it. And then spit it out. Okay. I start the day with the tongue scraper. So when I wake up, I do this first. And then brushing comes last for me in my workflow because my mornings are very structured. I wake up quite early. I'll start with, like I said, the, the, the tongue scraping. When I'm already, then I go to the kitchen and I hydrate. I use a special concoction of various different amino acids. I use a little bit of apple cider vinegar, a little bit of lime juice or, or um, lemon juice with it some salt, drink it, and then I'll do sport. So I, I, I do my workouts. And after this, I prepare my food anyways. Then the coconut oil pulling, then I sit down to eat, and then I drink my coffee. And let's say 20 minutes after, I will brush my teeth, or let's say 30, because you should wait a little bit after eating before you brush it. That's it. I don't brush in the evening. I only brush once a day. I have, But you have to know, I don't have any tooth decay, never had. I don't use any tooth floss. I have perfect gums. They're not bleeding. So I can do all this. So I know if your lifestyle and everything is perfectly healthy, you can go with all natural um, oral healthcare strategies. But you have to know where you're standing at. So it might be needed that you still do the conventional route or you need maybe, uh, you need the fluoride toothpaste at, for starters. But the goal should be that you don't need chemicals in your mouth because you're killing your immune system, your microbiome. It's like disinfecting your hands. But mm -hmm. you do it in your mouth, which is actually the entrance to your whole gut system and the, sec the most diversified microbiome in the body and the second largest. 
So it's really, really critical that this one doesn't get disinfected. Mm. Natural. So if I heard you correctly, there are some people that still need fluoride toothpaste, correct? Or it's no, no one no. does. No. The problem is I'm living in a bubble. I'm doing this for so many years. People are very pre-selected. They kind of like, you have to, yeah, you cannot just walk in into my clinic. So you have to be really prepared. You kind of, um, I don't, I'm blanking on the word right now. Change um, your lifestyle okay. completely. Yeah, you have to apply for an appointment. And then if you get one, you change your lifestyle before you see us. So I only see optimized people or I optimize them up front. So that's a little bit of a bubble. And obviously my lifestyle and nutrition is on point for the last 20 years. And I'm always prepared. So I have my food ready and everything. Um, this is just my lifestyle. So, but I know if I see, if I would see the average client who goes to the dentist, which I probably don't think is your demographic anyways, but the average one might has a lot of, might have a very dysbiotic mouth has a lot of mercury filling, has a lot of root canals, cavitations, and just a lot of dental work done. I don't say they need fluoride, but maybe, maybe a doctor would prescribe, let's say, a clinical mouthwash for two weeks. But the goal should be, obviously, to, to change this and to make that oral system, all that repair that has been done, more natural, using biomaterials. That's what we do. So that over a very fast period of time your mouth is back to where it, where it should be and then obviously you will never use any chemicals in your mouth because your tooth decay is not a chemical deficiency it is a deficiency in nutrients that you that you have because you ate too much processed foods like gluten containing grains or grains in general refined vegetables a lot of sugar all that thing all the things that we do on a daily basis so you see, it has to be done gradually, but I think your, your demographic or mine are anyways already optimized. So therefore, no fluoride. Yes. No toxins at all. It's not just fluoride. It's fluoride. It's triclosan. It's sodium laryl sulfate. Oh, yes. But you can also just hop into my Instagram and there's a link where you can, I think you can just click on it and then you can download my free PDF, what you should look for, or just, uh, I give all the information you just find everything there so okay. it's really it's easy, easy would you say that tooth decay is reversible yes depend depending on on the depth of it but initial tooth decay or oh, which we see it's in the enamel so it's only in the hard part of the tooth this is what when what you see on a on a bite wing for example like an x-ray you see that there are tiny little dark spots, but they're still in that hard part, 100% reversible. For us as biological dentists, it's just a mirror into your body. We see, oh, wow, there's deficiency. We would check your vitamin D3 and rule out gluten sensitivity. So for anyone out there, if you still suffer from tooth decay or your kids, check your vitamin D3 level in the blood. It will be low. And number two, rule out gluten sensitivity. That's it. That's the most, there's the most study and research actually around it, but that's not what you learn at university. No dentist knows about it. What level of vitamin D are you striving for? Like above 65? Yes, about, let's say, uh, yeah, above 65 nanogram or above, let's say 150 nanomole. Okay, okay. So depending on your scale, you have to look some, yes. some labs to nanomole, then you have to just multiply with 2.5. Mm -hmm. Yet, but above the average, above the norm, this is optimal level. So I would like to see 60 to 100 before surgery or lifetime. Because then I know that your bone and your teeth are always mineralized. Because if you have tooth decay, it's the same as osteoporosis. It's just um, the storage isn't there anymore. So your body stores certain nutrients in certain um, areas of the body. For example, muscle is a storage unit for amino acids. And bones, as you know, minerals, same for teeth. Teeth are minerals, crystal is a crystal. So if it gets depleted and you get a hole in there, it's not, it's not, just, from, not just from the bacteria that use um, sugar. It is a more um, systemic. Issue, more systemic issue, yeah. Yes. 
you know, I remember when I was pregnant with my second son, I'm sure a lot of women will relate to this. I had a lot of cavities after my second pregnancy, which was so shocking to me. Is that a common thing that happens? Yes. Mm. 100%. Pregnant, a lot of pregnant women come and say, I lost this juice to a root canal because I was in my pregnancy. It's kind of like, they don't know why that happens, unfortunately, because the dentist seems to not know it. But it's just super simple. When you're pregnant, your body prioritizes the baby. If you, th that means your baby needs to build a whole skeleton and a whole organ system, like a whole body. You build a whole body. If you're not in a surplus of nutrients, your body takes it from your body to build that other one because yours is not as important. So it's super simple. So mm -hmm. obviously minerals come from the bones and from the teeth. And muscle come, or protein comes from your muscles. So therefore, it actually... Dentistry should start before pregnancy, that you teach women out there how to optimize during pregnancy, that you have a beautiful baby, because also the teeth are already kind of like they're already there when the baby comes out as a, as a dental butt. Or even the, the baby teeth are already there, actually. They are already kind of mineralized. But the, even the second, even the, the adult teeth are already there as information. And then if the, if the woman is optimized during pregnancy, the baby obviously has a better foundation. But then next step, which is the first orthodontic treatment for babies is breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. Breastfeeding and sucking on the breast, your baby needs 10 to 12 times more strength than, than sucking on a, uh, um, what is this, a baby bottle. The bottle. Mm -hmm. And this will build the lower jaw moving forward from sucking. And also, because babies have to breathe through their noses, it will train nose breathing and widens your palate. So it's actually shaping your, your face. It's, it's really orthodontic treatment. And it should be, if possible, I know not all women are able to breastfeed, but if you can, it should be done for at least 18 months. Even longer is better. And then you obviously need to know how to feed that body that gets built for the next 20 years. Because if you have lack of nutrients during your growth phase, you, you um, grow narrow. You will need more orthodontics. You probably don't have space for your wisdom teeth. Then they need to be pulled out while you're 14 years old. Then you end up with cavitations. So you see, everything is starting early and we could actually put dentists out of business if they would know all this about. Mm. At least when it comes to dental repair, because I think we don't need dental repair. Right now, we... We need them to repair because it's insane what, you, what I see on a daily basis. Repairing what has been repaired by dentists is actually um, extreme because of all the things we did in like the last 30, 40 years using all the wrong materials. But the goal for your kids out there should be they should never need a dentist, not for repair, but they might need it for teaching them how to optimize your lifestyle, like a functional medicine practitioner, how to nourish the body so that you're jaw and your posture and everything grows because it's all aligned your, your mouth is kind of like the thermostat for your whole posture too for your nose breathing for your immune system for the allergies it's all basically it all starts in the mouth as you know right. yes okay you touched on so many points now i want to ask you a quick question about wisdom teeth pulling because you just said they might not need it what happens uh for example out of four of my kids one of them has wisdom teeth that are growing this way and it is genetic because i know like on their dad's side that's how the grandmother had her teeth is do you find that it's genetic and is it necessary to have wisdom teeth pulled mm. i don't think it's really genetic it's probably epigenetic but obviously it jumps generation wise so epigenetically if the grandma had it already it's already in that genes yeah. mm -hmm. so it might need one or two more generations to reverse it again, to make everything white again, because actually having no space for teeth is a degeneration yeah, of our bodies. We had, we had space for two wisdom teeth, let's say 10,000 years ago, when we eat harder foods and ate the right stuff. So to your question, um, if you have no space for your wisdom teeth, it might be necessary to pull them out because of maybe aesthetics, maybe because they really cause issues or pain because they're pressing from the inside but one caveat i personally would not do it with teenagers 
even though that's common practice, I know, because obviously orthodontists think they need space, mm -hmm. but jaw growth, I would say, um, is finished earliest when you're 21 years old. I even think it goes to 23 years, at least. There's still is some growth aspect. So I've seen patients with 14 years old having a, having a wisdom tooth like this, where you would say it will never work. They didn't do the treatment. They didn't do the removal. They just waited. And with 21 years, it was perfect because it just grew. I don't know. But obviously with 14 years old, you're in a growth phase. You don't want to do a surgery for, that's a little kid. Even though you think you're old when you're 14, no, you're not. You're a little kid growing up. And mm -hmm. some people even remove wisdom teeth when you're 12 years, 11 years old. Oh. I think that's really, really bad to do that for the health. You also have to see every tooth is connected to your central nervous system, to your Chinese meridian. And the wisdom teeth is especially important because they're connected to your adrenal glands and to your central nervous system. So what can happen is by pulling it out at the wrong time, that this part of your body is not really developing. Mm -hmm. So if possible, obviously if possible, start to do everything up front, widen the jaws, get the right breastfeeding, right nutrients so that it doesn't happen. But then try to wait as long as possible. So for example, my wife still has all the wisdom teeth impacted. She has no problem with it. I don't remove it. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah. She has no issue. Her body compensates for it. And if they're getting older, so she's now at 38, then again, it flips. Do you want to really remove them? Because at one point they kind of grow with your body and, and get part of it. So you choose, so with impacted wisdom tooth removal for older generation, let's say above 35, is sometimes uh, you have to decide between pest and cholera, so to speak. It's both bad because not the ideal surgery. You don't want to do that. Nobody's happy with it. It depends. So still mm -hmm. might be an issue for some chronic ill patients that need to take them out because there's huge capitations around it, but not necessarily. It needs, okay. to, be, it needs to be decided individually. Okay. That's a good advice. All right, let's dive into mercury fillings. I know you don't do mercury fillings, but I wanted to bring to the attention of those that have them, uh, mm -hmm. why it's important to remove them. And by the way, I had mine removed about 15 years ago and I had quite a few of them. And it is one of the top things I recommend uh, to people to remove if they're on the health and wellness journey. So I'd like to have you give your insight into why mercury fillings are dangerous, pose a health risk and inflammation. Yes. So first of all, whatever information we give you in here, don't freak out. It's just information first. Yes. You don't have to get crazy about the information, jump to the next dentist. No, listen to this one. Mercury filling or silver fillings, they contain 50% of mercury and mercury is the most toxic non-radioactive element known to men. It's just super toxic. And I learned as a dentist after school that I have to remove it as highly toxic waste. So I was like, why can't I put this into the mouth of my patients if it's so toxic? That makes no sense. But because it's so toxic, um, you don't want to remove it by a conventional dentist because they will just drill it out. And drilling a mercury filling out will produce way more of the toxic mercury vapor. That is a problem. So if you have a mercury filling that you're wearing on a daily basis, the mercury is not really bound to it. So you have a little bit of mercury vapor getting removed by chewing on those fillings, by drinking acidic um, drinks or eating acidic stuff, by grinding, by oral hygiene. There's always a little bit of vapor, like two to three microns, millions of milligrams and uh, millions of grams per day. It's vapor. It's, you don't smell it. You don't see it, but it goes into your cells on a daily basis. So you're intoxicating yourself. But if you just drill it out, you obviously have a hundredfold of this. And this is why what I have seen in the past with most chronic ill patients that they kind of had their amalgam fillings removed, not safely. And after that, something flipped and they got super sick. So come up with a strategy first, find a dentist who is smart certified. That means um, safe mercury amalgam removal technique, smart. You can find mm -hmm. it at OMT in the US, you just Google. And I think um, that's not a problem. And then do that safely. That's what we do. We have a seven-fold measurement how to remove these. We use the rubber dam. We have a special um, air filter suction device, which is called IQ Air, which sucks up 99% of all that vapor. We 
basically flip out the fillings and don't drill if possible. We use a lot of IV treatments before, during, after, and prepare your body with the right nutrients and supplements, which would Elena do for sure too with you guys. So that you, the, I, the goal is don't cause more harm. So you want to have these mercury fillings removed safely by a skilled biologic dentist in the US smart certified. That's it. Okay. Do that, come up with a strategy, don't flip out. The other question that I have, and I don't know if all the biological dentists are trained in it, um, in applied kinesiology to test and make sure that whatever is being put into the patient is tested. Is that something that you also do in your practice? Yes, we, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a complete, uh, not applied kinesiology, I'm trained by Dietrich Klinghardt, it's called autonomic response technique, but it's actually the same as, a, kind of the same, a little bit more specific. Um, no, not all biological dentists are trained in it. And I think it's not important actually, because you can also do that with blood work or what we did over years is obviously we tested all the materials with, with ELISA testing, but also with kinesiology. And we only have a minor few of products that usually don't cause any harm or any stress because obviously we have to repair still. The best strategy is never get a, get a tooth decay in the first place, but don't figure out if you need a little bit of composite. Our goal is more like, how can I optimize your body so that you tolerate a little bit of these things too? Mm -hmm. If you're a super allergic person, I only put in a cement and we wait until your whole system is repaired before we put in something um, more permanent. But usually, yeah, either blood work or testing is fine. Mm -hmm. Now, also, I want to talk about the difference. We'll talk about implants. Is that something that you provide as well? You do implants in your practice? That's yes. what I just said. I, I, I you just, yes. Said. So titanium, you, you don't do titanium, right? You don't do titanium. No, 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 no not at all. So a, a, an implant is a, if you lost a complete tooth and you need the root to be replaced. So if you have a missing tooth, then you need an implant. And conventional dentistry uses titanium implants. That's the gold standard for the last 40 years. And, but it changes right now. So I'm a spe one of the first specialists in ceramic implants and the vice president of that ceramic implant foundation. And I have extensive um, practice and have placed over 5,000, which is quite a lot. If you know that only point, wait a second, point, point three, let's say 99.7% then 99 of all dentists worldwide use titanium. The rest is ceramic implants. So it's almost non-existent for now. But ceramic implant, a titanium implant is a metal. It's titanium dioxide is a metal. And, and even though it's working, you can buy it on it, it works. It is a foreign material causing an ongoing foreign body reaction, which is chronic inflammation causing cytokines like TNF-alpha, interleukin, IS beta, NF-kappa B on an ongoing basis. And a lot of people suffer from periimplantitis these days. Around about 25% of all titanium implants fail because of an ongoing kind of like periodontitis, but it's called periimplantitis, chronic inflammation, tissue inflammation around that implant. So we have to have new solutions. And the ceramic implant for this year first, like this year first, it is in the guidelines in, in German medicine, in a German dentistry. Guidelines is, is like the highest level. So they are fully accepted. Finally, took us a... 10 years to get spit on and now are finally accepted. And they qualify as a biomaterial. So instead of putting a foreign body into your system, we are able to implant a biomaterial. That means it's 100% natural, no immune reaction to it. And it will only heal with your body when your body is able to heal. Therefore, what we do around it is more on optimizing your overall health so that your body is anabolic in the face of building uh, like the surgery so that your body is able to build bone teeth. And then we have a solid um, alternative. So for example, if you have a root canal here, you know, most people are just like, oh, what can I do now? What is my solution? I have a root canal here. I don't want to have a gap. It will look, it will look bad. Most, most dentists will um, tell them about a titanium implant or they have already a titanium implant. So what we do is immediate ceramic implants. Not just pulling a tooth, waiting for three months, which the conventional dentistry route is, but immediately that means I can take that tooth out very, very gently. I disinfect and clean the socket with ozone. We had it before. 
We use PRP or PRF in this case, and a lot of other things to clean it. And then if everything's stable, I put the ceramic implant straight away into that socket to preserve it. And studies are quite clear. They're coming all for all you dentists out there. An immediate implant saves bone quality and quantity. And for all your patients, you actually never have a surgery. It's all in one. You can't go out with a temporary and you come back after four to six months and you just get your crown and everything is stable and perfectly healthy. But obviously your body needs to be prepared and we will teach you how to use nutrients so that it will be stable. Because again, it only osteointegrates if your body can build bone and tissue. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter for titanium. A titanium implant heals with an ongoing chronic inflammation. It's a total different approach. So, so can titanium implants be pulled out? Do you recommend taking them out and replacing? I'm not allowed to say I recommend it. So oh. for my patients that come in because mm -hmm. of optimizing their health and having a lot of chronic health issues, we obviously always plan to get, go 100% metal-free. That means we take out all the titanium implants. A lot of these patients already had a MELISA test done or any sort of um, test they know already. They're either allergic to it or electrohypersensitive, so they want to pull it out. And yes, it is possible to take out titanium implants, minimal invasive, without causing any harm. But if you haven't done this before, a usual a general dentist or conventional dentist or conventional maxillofacial surgeon won't know about it because they usually don't have to take out titanium implants. They do that as their standard procedure. So they will tell you that it's very invasive and it will ruin the whole bone. And yes, it's correct. If you go to someone who doesn't know how to do it, they just break it out and you cause a huge bone defect. Don't do this. You have to find someone who knows how to do it. So we do it. We basically unscrew it. And then if possible, after cleaning again the bone and making it healthy again or revitalizing it, placing again a ceramic implant straight away if possible. It's the same as root canal. What we do, like all our patients get planned before they even see us on a, we need a panoramic x-ray. And then we plan no metal, no root canal, no cavitations. That's so to speak, the bed and breakfast, all inclusive. And obviously for all the teeth that we need to replace, we plan a ceramic implant. And then you come in for one health optimization a week where we remove the metal safely, obviously, and do all that surgical procedures and do a lot of health optimization things to help you speed up your recovery, like hyperbaric oxygen, intravenous therapies, whatever you can imagine. And obviously you're preparing for this with the right nutrition and supplements four weeks prior at least. And then everything is healthy and you also get trained on how to live your life for the next three to six months perfectly so that you build. And then you come back to get these teeth, the aesthetic part or the function and aesthetic. Because it's not just aesthetic. Aesthetic follows function. If you buy it and you're grinding all the time, you buy this off, it doesn't work. So we obviously take care of this. And then it's actually very charming protocol. That's why people fly in more from all over the world than from Germany for the last more than 10 years because it's kind of like so fast. Yeah? Imagine the usual route. You see the dentist 15, 20 times and dentists usually don't think about their patients. They just think about it in terms of their work. I think about my patients too. How can I make it more efficient? How can I make it more effective? I know that patients may be afraid of me or the surgery or anything. So if you put this in one compressed week, you just take that week off. Wherever you come from, we take care of it. And then you fly back out. It's actually also probably even cheaper. And of course, it's the fastest route to uh, optimizing your overall health and well-being by starting in the mouth. Because what we do is basically get you to where you came, how you came out of your mom, yeah, make it more natural again or all natural again. Mm. That's wonderful. I'd like to also now talk about briefly root canals, the dangers of root canals. What do you recommend in your practice? I guess you recommend pulling the tooth out, but let's talk about the dangers of root canals and how what kind of things it can be linked to. Yeah. <laughs> Root canals, I think, are by far the most controversial topic in whole dentistry. And you have to see root canals is a huge business too. There are dentists, they are called endodontologists. And don't get me wrong, all endodontologists out there. I know it's a 
very highly craft skill and really good endodontists use a they use a microscope and they really do that perfectly it's really a skill that you need however if you have if you need a root canal because you have tooth pain like it's a massive if you have massive tooth pain because you have cavity that goes through your nerve you need help that's how the root canal was invented originally as an acute pain treatment and this is still where you need it for it's on you guys out there because you lost your tooth by not taking care of it so we will then take the root the, the, the life parts out of the tooth which is your blood supply your limb supply your autonomic nervous system and disinfect that area which is the, the big channels in the tooth and put some medication in there and then fill it up at one point when it's stable and no more pain to use it for biting for the next 30 40 50 years it works however it was never a good idea to keep a dead body part in your body. And this is what you leave there. There's no more blood supply to that tooth. So there's no more immune system in that tooth. And if you only clean these big channels, you're missing out on a huge part of of your tooth. You have to see a tooth in a microscope or an electron microscope per root has about, no, per square millimeter has about 30 to 75,000 little tiny tubules. They're called dentin tubules. And bacteria that live with you in your mouth, they can go in there and strive. They will then make that tooth into a chronic infection or a chronic infection site, let's say compartmentalized. And if you have an immune system, it will attack it. That's why we see on three dimensional x rays almost every single tooth that is a root canal has some sort of ongoing chronic inflammation on the tip of it. Your body can, can just do two things to, to take care of that chronic infected tooth. Think about a tooth as a cave for, let's say, or like a hole for a mouse. And your mm -hmm. immune system is the cat. The cat can't go into that hole because it's, too, it's just too big. And the mouse is in there produce, uh, making havoc. So your immune system would be the cat. And, and the immune system can only produce an ongoing inflammation by doing a cyst. Yeah, a cyst is, is kind of like very dense tissue to to let's say just hold a couple of these bacteria and toxins at, at spot but there's also an inflammation that destroys your bone or you could build a wall around it your body will then just hyper mineralize the area and then kind of like grow that tooth within your body so it will be more like in a wall later on that's the two two options so root canal dead tooth no more immune system to attack these bacteria Bacteria now living in tubules like these mouses, producing their metabolisms, which are highly toxic compounds that your body has to detox. And at the same time, your immune system will attack it if you have an immune system. That's just normal. Think about a black foot or black toe, something dead on your body. No doctor would leave it there. Just dentists do it because you can make it nice again by putting a crown on top. So it is an ongoing chronic inflammation and a silent trigger for your system. Therefore, obviously, a biological dentist will recommend a more long-term solution at one point, which is what we talked about, an immediate ceramic implant or even a late ceramic implant, not titanium. Why? Because the third health killer would be metals, not just the amalgam. No metal in your mouth is tolerated because metals always come with a couple of different challenges for your overall health. Should I touch the challenges? Yes, please. <laughs> So we already had the mercury. The mercury is toxicity. It's just toxic for your body. Your liver has to detox it. It is just killing your neurons, whatever. But the second one would be your immune system. Your immune system is there. And your mouth is specifically big or diversified. It's kind of like the army to protect you. And your immune system is there to protect you from foreign invaders, foreign proteins, foreign particles. So you can become allergic even to these metals or to these toxins. So immune system is second. And if you're allergic to anything, it's not dose dependent anymore. Toxicity is dose dependent, the dose that makes the poison. Immune system, you get allergic, you're allergic to even a tiny little bit, even just, even just a micron. And number three with metals in this world is the human antenna. You will have a metal. Can I say that? <laughs> <laughs> you know it? Yeah, because you have, you're living in an EMF loaded world. We have 3G, 4G, 5G. We have Wi-Fi and all these different radars and everything. And if you have metal in your body, 
it will be an antenna because your system is, your body is electric. It is a little battery. And this battery runs very specifically on a couple of new currents. And if you have interference now because of ongoing, like let's say the, the Wi-Fi or let's say your cell phone, the, the cell phone tower coming in, it changes the whole nervous system. And it makes people electro hypersensitive for titanium implant, for example, as even studies showing if you have a phone call that the area around that implant gets heated up because of that waves up to four degrees, three to four degrees Celsius, which means high fever. So you melt down the bone around that implant or for mercury filling, there's research showing if you do a phone call and you have mercury filling, more of the toxic vapor comes out. So you're really intoxicating yourself and you're making your body, your immune system go berserk and you're more of an antenna now. So in my opinion, as we have better solutions that are more biocompatible and more biomaterials, why would you? Would be rude not to change it. But you need someone who knows how to. Yes. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. It's great advice. I want to hear a couple of absolute no's in the diet besides the sugar mm. that will create uh, cavities in the mouth. Yeah, basically, the, the, the no-goes that I always look for, at least when it comes to a healing phase, is I call it the core four, like the, the four, mostly containing in-processed foods is sugar, obviously, like every dentist says it, gluten-containing grains, refined vegetable oils, like canola, and rapeseed, grapeseed, sunflower, safflower, all these things cause inflammation all mm -hmm. ongoing. And even conventional dairy to some extent is something I would avoid. So obviously all processed foods or man-made foods are kind of like a combination of out of it. So if you just eat like our ancestors did with more nutrient dense foods, more natural, you usually get more nutrients that build your body anyways and not deplete you too much because sugar is not just an anti-nutrient. It also changes the pH, your insulin, you're getting insulin resistant. And this also affects how and phosphorus and, and, and calcium, all these minerals work in your body. You deplete yourself of more minerals and grains, for example, chelate minerals, phytic acid, for example, in, in a lot of grains pulls magnesium and other minerals. So you don't even get them into your system. So eating stuff like what we can hunt or fish or gather is probably the best bet. And you can look into Western Price's work. So he had written a very good book, which is called Nutrition and Physical Degeneration 100 years ago. It was amazing. And he studied um, Aborigines, he studied Western Africans, even Swiss mountain people. Even the, um, the one in, living in Alaska, the Inuit from Alaska. So he just looked how their diet and their specific nutrients they're taking, how their body represents or physically degenerates. And I also have a chapter in my book about nutrition. And, on, and I teach thinking in nutrients because, uh, which for me personally is the umbrella of all the dietary mindsets, because you see, I have thousands of patients with different mindsets. Some people want to be a vegan, some want to be a carnivore, some want to do intermittent fasting. You know, there's so much diets out there. Yes. And I just optimize their nutrient intake on their specific mindset. Even though I'm not a fan of being a vegan, I know that a lot of people want to do it, so I have to be able to do that. And it's very, very straightforward. And if you learn it as a dentist or health coach or medical doctor, you will actually be able to optimize one's diet within five to maximum 10 minutes. That's maximum what I need. And I personally hold that patient accountable because if I sat down with them, they will do it for sure. And I know then the results will be way better because I'm all about that challenge for the patient. They have to bring a lot of things up front, but I do the same. So I give the best for my patients, but I also demand the best because then we will have really ongoing results, which is the goal. I don't want to see you again as a dental patient. Never. It's the, not, it's the opposite of a regular conventional office. We don't want to see you again. You can come in for health optimization, but if you get a tooth decay again, then something is totally wrong. Or you lose an implant, for example, then it would mean we check your vitamin D3 level. Because if, you, if your vitamin D3 is too low, you're not just getting tooth decay. You also get um, osteoporosis. And if you know that your implant doesn't hold anymore, I know that you're losing minerals from your bone. So we always have a lot of checks included on how to help you stay accountable. 
and mm. take responsibility, obviously, for your health. You know, speaking of, you said you're not a fan of vegetarian. I actually looked at different diets and microbiome content. And vegetarians and fruitarians have the lowest diversity in the microbiome. I don't know if you knew that. No, I didn't know. Yeah, they have like almost no bifida bacteria, which is fascinating, but that's what you need in order to thrive and have strong immunity. The vegetarians, may, maybe it's vegans. Uh, vegans have- Ve a, Yes, vegans. Yeah, vegetarians might be the best of both worlds because you still get animal proteins. But vegans is difficult. Vegans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, obviously, as a vegan, you're missing out on a couple of key nutrients that are just not in plants. Um, especially also, obviously, the, all the amino acids. Is, you know that plant-based proteins or amino acids are not as bioavailable. Of course, you, you can, if you have a super diversified microbiome, there are people that can only eat sweet potato and upcycle everything from it. I know that it's existing, but not the conventional Westerner. Yeah, you probably live in the woods somewhere in, in um, Middle America or South America and, and do that for seven generations or 10. Yes, maybe. But for general people, general Westerners, no. You need nutrients and you need the right ones and that you should acquire from your nutrition. And just... I don't say you have to eat animals, but it is easier. Let's say it's being a vegetarian or vegan is not foolproof. You have to really put a lot of thought into how to optimize it. It is possible, but I, I tell you, most people that jump on that bandwagon don't even know what they're doing. They just will eat more gluten, more sugar, because yeah. it's vegan. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Instead yeah, of, they have more issues with their teeth. Yes. Yes, and that, it's, it's crazy what they have for issues with it. With, they, they get all softer teeth and obviously there are good it's not there are plant-based people out there that know exactly what they're doing and they strive and it will work perfectly i'm just saying on average it won't work and it, because it's too explanatory you have to do too much things for it and for me it's more about how can i optimize it and help everyone and i think step one with anything single diet out there is Go off the crap foods. Don't eat that crap foods and you're quite good already. And then you just look for more natural and whole foods and you get your things. And then you optimize micronutrients on top of it, like vitamin D3, for example, which is actually a hormone. Yes, that's wonderful. All amazing advice, amazing information. Where can people find you if you can please share? And then we'll put the link in the show notes. I actually believe the easiest to find me is on Instagram right now. You can also find me on YouTube, but Instagram, I'm also answering the DMs mostly myself. There's also a little bit of information every single day and there are links in the bio where you can click on the tab bio and you find everything. You find my clinic, you find the book, you find the YouTube channel, you find a, a huge load of um, podcasts that I've done over the last couple of years to spread that information. And I encourage every single patient or every single person to help on that mission. So I can only, I can only do that in, in a team of co that we all co-elevate because it's about, to ch we, we want to change something and all take responsibility. I'm just leading it a little bit, um, but in order to make it a huge movement, everyone needs to join. Therefore, I also believe it's critical that all medical doctors, health coaches, naturopaths know about the oral about the oral cavity, because it seems to be still a missing bit of the body, which is all very much overlooked. And even the who said it, 70% of all chronic disease starts in the mouth. And if you have tooth decay, bleeding gums, you already know, unhealthy mouth, unhealthy body. So bad teeth, bad body, or the opposite. Very healthy mouth, very healthy teeth, very healthy body, most likely. Because you can see it straight away at your teeth. You see the whole ecosystem. And I believe it's all about you and taking responsibility if you want to change something. There's so many good people like Elena out here who has a podcast, who spreads the information so that we can all help each other. So if you just forward, for example, this video to one person, you help one person. And, or if you like and share all the content we put out there, it just helps instead of just only consuming. That would be a great um, way forward to change that system. Yes, thank you so much. This is how I actually found you on Instagram. I saw I've been following your page at least this year, and I think you put out amazing content, amazing information. And it's something that I believe in and I have talked about for many years. 
with my patients and clients. So thank you so much for what you do. And yes, it's about spreading good yeah. information through, with friends, sharing it with loved ones, with physicians as well. So, cause I'm sure there's many people looking for the right uh, dentist that knows what they're doing. And uh, you are definitely the one. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for having me. It was my pleasure.